Welcome to Hannah Early College High School. We're here today to celebrate a great accomplishment for one of uh, your extremely talented classmates and a, a very talented volleyball, basketball, and softball player. Of course, Ari, as, as we know her, Ariana Arsenault, will be attending Mount Mercy University in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and will be representing the Mustangs in softball. Mount Mercy competes in the Heart of America Athletic Conference of the NAIA. At this time, uh, I'd like to say that Ms. Lombardi wishes she could be here. She couldn't be here at this time, but she certainly congratulates Ariana on, on her great accomplishments. She's a very big fan of yours. Uh, but she had gotten called to the, the central office, so she couldn't make it. Uh, but at this time, I'll go ahead and introduce uh, Ariana's softball coach, uh, Coach Boomer Larson, to say a few words. Good afternoon. Um, a couple years ago, we heard about a girl coming here from Louisiana. Uh, supposedly was a good athlete. This and that. You know, you hear that all the time with people that move in. But in this case, she uh, is a very good athlete, plays multiple sports. You know, in a, in a day and age where a lot of people just concentrate on one sport, she does three and does them well. And uh, it, was, it was a great honor to get to coach her. I still got another year to put up with her. <laughs> but, uh, you know, she came in and uh, does a great job. Softball, she's uh, fun to be around every once in a while. <laughs> and, uh, you know, as someone that played college sports in Iowa, I just want to tell you, you're going to love uh, spring, summer, and fall. <laughs> and the other five months, well, good luck with you. <laughs> okay, so. Um, she's had great support here with her parents, supporting her all the time. And uh, her father's going to say some words now, and <laughs> it's, this should be very entertaining. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, y'all know before we moved here, I bled Lafayette High. My dream was to have four boys all a year apart going to coaching. No, listen, listen, going to coaching and win a state championship or whatever, just with all four boys. I started off good, we had two. <laughs> then Ariana was born, and real talk, she was born without a doctor. She looked at me, I screamed, laying on the bed. <laughs> the nurse said, are you okay? I said, uh, yeah, because I'm gonna need your help. I pushed a button, I watched the ceiling fall down. Next thing you know, whatever, I was cutting the umbilical cord. And the reason I mention that is because um, since that day, I wasn't really attached to her, because just recently, like maybe two years ago, I'm not even lying, we, we, we came here and I had to apologize to my wife. And let me tell you why. Uh, because, I, first of all, I'm always right. But this time I had to apologize to her. I worked for a company that believed and I gave 110%. I worked for UPS, I bled brown. Them, them drivers you see in that truck, they not playing. They, they sacrificing a lot, missing out on family. I was making a whole lot of money, dishing out the money. Then one day, I got, I had to have a little minor surgery, a little uh, hernia surgery. And I was, the, I was the guy that would, on vacation, when I had a week vacation, I'd take two weeks. I had eight weeks total, take two weeks. I would send them off, go to work Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Go meet them Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, take off the Monday, be back at work. On Thanksgiving, I was working. On Christmas Eve, I was working. But to go back to what I was telling you about telling my wife that I apologized, because Ariana was born November 29th. That's peak season. That's Christmas season. That's the most busiest time of the year for my company. So here goes. I'm in the uh, delivery room. My daughter's born. We cut the umbilical cord. I held it for about an hour. I get a phone call. Said, uh, did your wife have the baby? I'm like, yes. I said, congratulations. The next thing out of his mouth was, did she have a natural birth? I'm like, uh, okay, where's, you know, who asked that kind of question? I'm like, yes, she did. Um, well, we need you back to work. I looked at my wife. After not even 45 minutes of, of having Ariana, I had to walk out the hospital, okay? That, that's how much I bled brown. But a year into this, I made sure that I didn't want to get attached to her because um, I just, I didn't, because I, I come from a generation of just men. 
One day I walked in the house, and it's about 9 o'clock. My wife's on the phone with her mom, speaking Spanish. My, my baby's on the floor, and not on the floor, in the, uh, in the walker. My baby, Ariana. <laughs> on the floor in the walker, I, can, I could visualize it like it was yesterday. I'm at the refrigerator getting some ice out of the machine. She's eight months old, and my wife is in the conversation. I'm not even paying attention. I'm blocking the Spanish out. The TV is on, the Spanish soap opera, and Ariana is hollering, Agua, Teta, Papas. And my wife's like, don't you hear her? I said, okay, if she don't learn some English in this house, she gonna starve, okay? <laughs> Next thing, um, that's when I got attached to her because uh, she started saying daddy and uh, we started with the little beauty pageants and all this or whatever and I had to go sit through all that. Y'all know how that goes. But then it came to a point where we got to middle school and the friends that she was following were athletes and they convince her to join sports, and I think like Victor Campos say, uh, they garbage. She was garbage. She, she, was, she was trash, yeah. The, the athlete y'all seen today, no, we had to work on that. But uh, she, um, she became a, a really good athlete, and what I noticed was if she asked me if I was going to a game, when I'd show up, for example, volleyball game, if she's serving the ball, she's continuously doing this, looking at the door. And I realized that, I think, I, I think the word is called, uh, uh, I got a, uh, sorry y'all, I'm, I'm not used to talking in front of a lot of people and I'm very shy. Uh, yeah, yeah, very, very shy, very shy. Um, an epiphany, that, that's the word. I, I think I got an epiphany and I, I just decided that I had the time to retire and I would retire or whatever and invest all my time into my kids and in my family. And as you can see today, my best investment, I have a whole lot, but this one here, uh, th this has been the best. Th this is gonna tear me apart when she leaves. I hate to say it, in I'm telling y'all cause y'all family. I'm not talking to my wife and daughter, I'm talking to y'all. We family, Hannah, yeah. <laughs> so, so when y'all see me, yeah. When y'all see me moping around, I'll still be going to the volleyball games, hollering at Alexis and O'Dallies, and Saban will be wearing his, his, his morph suit, and Anthony and Marco, we're going to yell and scream, and for the football team, too, and Victor Campos. Uh, but I'll probably be moping around because my life is, I put my life on hold for this young lady, and uh, I'm telling you, it's, it's going to really, really tear me apart. Uh, the time is going by fast. This day here, I don't, I don't think I probably got about an hour of sleep because... Bottom line, she is my best friend. And not only is she my best friend, y'all see the athlete. Let me explain to you what I've seen. My son, and I'm telling y'all this, but don't start feeling sorry for him, okay? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm being real. Don't, don't sugarcoat it. Some, Victor and all them, and Ernest and them, they heard the story, but y'all gonna hear it. And don't feel sorry for him. Don't change what y'all doing, okay? All right, so like I told you, I worked a lot. I got off at four o'clock in the afternoon. It was daylight. I'm bringing my truck back in, my phone is ringing. I mean, ringing off the chain. I'm the safety man, I preach safety to 70 drivers every day, I can't answer that phone. I get to a light, the Walmart is right down about two blocks away from my house, I mean, from uh, bringing the truck in. I look at my cell phone, my oldest son who's a Marine, he was in high school then, he's like, Dad, Dad, Sabian just got ran over by a car. That's not funny. Why no, you, I didn't say laugh. laughing? No, 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 no. Why no, no, are you no, no, laughing? No, no, no. Hold on. Okay. Say, Saving just got ran over by a car. We're at, we're at Lafayette General Hospital. I didn't ask no questions. I pulled my truck in. Uh, I asked the supervisor if he can turn in my money, da, 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 da. I get ready to head on to Lafayette General. I'm sorry. They told me women's and children. I get ready to go to women's and children. I get a call back. Uh, they tell me that they're at uh, Lafayette General. Pull up to Lafayette General. I walk into a room. That morning, Sabian was the, was the, first, was the only person I saw because everybody else was asleep when I left. And uh, he was dribbling his basketball like he normally does at about 6.30 in the morning. And uh, I walk into the hospital and I'm the person that thought I was the rock that could handle anything. And, 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 and t trust me, God uh, 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 make you see things that will humble you. I walked into a hospital and heard four doctors talking to my wife. She's sitting down at a on a chair, and she's tears coming down. Ariana's on the floor. Uh, my son Paco is on the floor, and um, my, my whole family was torn. So I walked in to hear, this is exactly what I heard. Uh, we're checking to see if we can put pins in his leg. We're checking to see if we have to do a skin graft because he has burns like he walked into a, a, like a third-degree burns. And I'm like, okay, what the, you know, I was speechless. 
you know, all I could do was pray, and I said, is, can I see him? I walked into a room or whatever. It took eight of us to hold Sabian down. Sabian is seven years old. Eight, no, no, eight of us to hold him down because he had burns on him, and they had to keep it clean and wrap the gauze until the point. But I'm, I'm not going to say forget Sabian, but yeah, don't feel sorry for Sabian. Sabian is good. But my, my point is about Ariana. Okay, so this happened like right before the summer started. I watch my, Sabian and Ariana is 14 months apart, I watch my eight-year-old daughter stay at the hospital, take a shower at the hospital the whole summer, okay? These are two kids that's, they're in the car knocking heads. I'm, me and my wife numb to it because that's all they've been doing since day one. But when that happened, I watch a different child. I watch a child grow up and I watch her nurse Sabian till he was, Sabian's leg was broken in three, in three places. He had a full, he was in a wheelchair, full cast. When school started, she held his books. I knew my house was in order when I saw him on crutches and he was in our room and she started hollering, uh, get out of my room, you're annoying, da 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 da. I said, okay, it's time for me to go back to work. But I got a chance to see that part of her. The next thing, Papito, everybody knows Papito. I don't know how, but everybody knows Papito. Okay, yeah, okay. Papito stopped breathing in my arms the second week he was born. I, I got off of work, it was about 10, 10, 10.30 at night, and uh, uh, I was asleep, I heard a loud scream, pick him up by his bassinet, my wife was in another room. I had to watch my wife do CPR on a week old baby, and watch the fire department come, and the ambulance come, and they were freaking clueless, excuse me. So with that, I appreciate all of them, but let's get back to Ariana. We have been to hell and back, so I'm telling you this because this is how we end up here. I retired to spend a lot of quality time. Uh, my wife said she wants to come closer to her family. And Sabian, believe it or not, came here because we threw a birthday party for Papito. And next thing you know, I say, well, you know what? Won't you go ahead and stay here with mama since she's working? And I'll stay with Ariana since Ariana had 6,000 followers. I don't want to go to Brownsville. I'm not leaving here. And then, so after Sabian's first year, after Sabian's first year, she saw how much fun Saban was having and he wasn't crying. He wasn't crying about coming to get his clothes. He had one piece of clothes here or whatever. Then she came here for Mardi Gras and she saw the way y'all party. She saw the way y'all <laughs> rock. She came and watched Saban play football. She heard about Coach Guest and the rest is history and now she's here. But with that said, Coach Guest had to meet the wrath of my wife because I don't think he's ever met anybody like that. Because when she said, I'll bring my daughter here, but she's not sitting down for no whole year. We got to try to make something happen. Next thing you know, uh, he told us, he walked us through everything, told us exactly what, what, what had to transpire, and I appreciate him for that. He is a real as can be. Uh, Boomer and Coach Letman, Letman or whatever. Uh, I, I mess up everybody's name. Y'all know how that goes. Uh, but anyway, he, um, I think that between Boomer and Letman, they put my daughter in the right position because prior to them, she was in her freshman year, she was the outstanding uh, offensive player of the year, but we had a lot, of, a lot of headaches because they didn't put it in the right place. I would go and talk to them, and this is my lecture. Coach, when I release my daughter to you, I'm, you should gain another daughter. The only color you should see is the color of the uniform, okay? Uh, when I came here, I didn't have to make that speech. First time ever, uh, they were saying, I don't want to talk about Boomer, but they were saying that uh, they old school, booming them old school. And I said, that's what I want. I want the yelling and the screaming because that's, what, that's what's going to push her. But Boomer then was tie-tying her, and I think we was in uh, uh, Roma uh, doing a tournament. Mission. mission, yeah, we was in Mission doing a tournament, and Ariana supposedly hurt herself. But they played the first game, they left. Next thing you know, Ariana comes back with a, a knee brace. A knee brace, I'm like, what the hell you got that from? She's like, a Boomer bought it for me or whatever. I said, okay. She's in the stands waiting to play the next game, and she's dancing. She's doing your dance, Marco, you know, doing your dance in the stands. Then the next thing, we get ready to play, and she's like, I'm not playing. I'm, I'm DHing. I'm just hitting. So she's like, my, my wife's like, well, why are you not playing? She said, because uh, Boomer didn't want to arrest me or whatever. They say they don't want me to get hurt. They want to save me for, uh, uh, for district. Yeah. So my wife went up to him and whatever, and she's like, under no circumstances do you ta-ta. Y'all know what ta-ta is, right? It's French. But yeah, don't baby me. Yeah. Don't ta-ta uh, this young lady or whatever, because um, we don't ta-ta at all. And so the rest is history, but I want to thank not only the coaches, I want to thank Hannah because y'all made this experience or whatever smooth sailing. 
And my deal was, I'll stay here as long as she's happy. If she gets unhappy, then uh, I'm ready to go. Also, the volleyball coaches, Coach Whit uh, Whitmore and, and Coach Hegman, I see y'all I see y'all there, and Gonzalez. And also, speaking of Gonzalez, uh, in high school, no, no, seriously, in high school, she walked in the house and she said, I'm not playing basketball anymore because I'm not feeling basketball anymore. I said, okay. I went talk to my pit bull, I mean my wife. Went talk to my wife. <laughs> my pit bull went to the kitchen and said, you, you're not playing what? She said, no, I'm not playing. She said, no, no, you're gonna give it one year and after that you don't have to play. So when we moved here, she said, nah, I told her. I said, well, you don't have to play basketball. You can concentrate on, on the other three sports or whatever. Till she met Gonzalez. And Gonzalez, you know, have all girls, so he's like a yes, yes for everything or whatever. So I still don't want her to play basketball or whatever, but Gonzalez got control over me, and I thank him for being the other father or whatever to her or whatever. And to Megan, Victor, all the other people, Marco, Anthony or whatever, I'm short-winded. I'm going to leave it alone. But thank you all very much, and I appreciate it, Hannah. Go, Hannah. Hi. <laughs> okay, so I wrote a speech. <clears throat> it's not as long as my dad's, but I mean, you know, you could talk forever. Okay. First off, I'd like to thank the big man upstairs, my amazing family, and all of my friends and coaches who believed in me and supported me along the way. Especially my parents. They worked so hard to provide for my brothers and I a better life than they had, and they did one hell of a job. And I'm glad that I could make, uh, that I could make their lives easier with a scholarship considering how hard my spoiled self has made it. <laughs> I like to think of my life as a tournament and each level of softball being a game. Like a tournament, every game you progress gets harder and harder, leading to the championship game. College ball is my championship game. Countless hours put in, sacrifices, money spent, all for one dream, my dream. Moving here my sophomore year, I took a leap of faith, and standing here two years later, it was one of the best decisions I've made. And <laughs> I forgot where it was. <laughs> um, Hannah High welcomed me with open arms, and I'm forever grateful for all the amazing friendships I've grown, especially our little student section group. <laughs> I'll be in Iowa this time next year, but I know the impact I've left athletically will remain. I will always bleed brown and gold. Okay, now at this time, Ariana is ready to sign the letter. I want to I thank somebody too over there. No, 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 real quick. Just one. Hey, I want to recognize uh, another good friend. We talked about all the people at Hannah and our family or whatever, but uh, Renee Ponce, stand up. This is a bad girl. She's a setter or whatever for the Bobcats of Edinburgh or whatever, and Ariana and her played with Venom, and I thank her and our mama Erica or whatever for coming here and support Ariana. Thank you all.